Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm out on the 2023 Suzuki GSX-8S, which I will be referring to as the 8S from this point forward, just for simplicity's sake. And I'm heading out towards Tortilla Flat, Arizona. Now, I like to take all my new bikes out this way because I'm familiar with the roads. Uh, they're a lot of fun to ride, and it gives me a good idea of a number of different um, you know, riding parameters, like how well does the bike do in wide open spaces with like crosswinds going on and that kind of stuff, uh, how it handles twisties. So it gives me a good idea of how the suspension is, um, how comfortable the seat is, stuff like that. It also has the benefit of having some really nice spots to pull over and take pictures of the new bike. So it's probably the main reason why I take this route. <laughs> So a couple weeks ago when I picked this bike up, I rode it home in power mode C. And to be honest with you, coming from a KTM 390 Adventure, which was my last bike, um, that power mode C was plenty. In fact, it felt so powerful compared to the last bike that I was riding that I didn't feel the need to change it. And I thought it would be a good thing to just use that for a while and get used to the way the bike rides and and uh, the way the power comes on. So, being that this is my third time out on the bike now, I'm comfortable enough switching it to power mode B, and I do feel quite a bit of a difference in the power delivery. I don't feel too much of a difference between power mode B and power mode A for some reason. It might, maybe it's just B. In any case, all the power modes on here feel very linear. I'm really happy with the way the throttle response is. I think I can go on record saying that this is probably the smoothest throttle response on a bike that I've ever experienced. Now keep in mind, Everything I have to say here is all personal opinion. Um, a lot of this stuff is subjective, like the looks of the bike. I happen to like the way the bike looks, but it might not be your thing, but that's okay. Wow, Superstition Mountains. I know the GoPro does not do this view justice, but this just looks amazing in person. Uh, mountains are a little bit hazy today. I was hoping to get some, some nice shots of the bike in front of the mountains. So we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, uh, this is still the break-in phase of this bike, so I'm kind of staying off the freeway right now, although I did take it on a short ride the other day, and it does really well. I mean, of course, it's a naked bike, so you're going to get a lot of wind, but it's a smooth wind, and I don't really have any complaints about it. I don't really plan on going on trips or anything on this bike. I don't really think that's what it's intended for, uh, but you can take any bike anywhere that you choose to if uh, you have enough willpower. So <laughs> I'm not even going to go into that discussion, but um, me personally, I, I've recently come to the realization that I don't particularly like touring. I don't like freeway riding. Um, maybe it's just the bikes that I've had or inexperience in doing it, but I'm just not comfortable with it. And I'm okay with that. You know, I had made plans actually to do that. Um, you know, I previously had a Triumph Tiger Sport 660 and I put all the luggage on it and everything. And I had these grand intentions to, you know, go out of state and take a, like a week or two road trip and, uh, I kind of canceled plans to do that. So um, it's not that I never want to do any kind of touring or any trips outside of the state, but I've decided that if I ever go that route, I'm probably going to do like a structured motorcycle tour, um, you know, hire a company to set up itinerary and just make it a comfortable experience. 
stay at hotels that night uh, instead of camping on the side of the road and that kind of thing. See, I much prefer these kind of roads. Uh, I mean, you're, you could potentially be going highway speeds out here, but I don't know. I don't know if it's the scenery or just having the single lane traffic. I think having multiple lanes of traffic just kind of freaks me out a little bit going highway speeds. So I think I'm a lot more comfortable riding in roads like this. This isn't sketchy at all. Let's do a quick walk around, talk about the specs. This is a 2023 Suzuki GSX-8S. And this is the Pearl Tech White with Pearl Cosmic Blue accents. The seat height is 31.9 inches, which is 810 millimeters. I'm six feet tall and I can easily flat foot this. Uh, I can just swing my leg over. I don't have to climb up on it like the KTM 390. So it makes it a lot easier to get on and off, especially for somebody with back problems like myself. It's got sort of a whitish seat on here, so um, it's fairly comfortable. It's a little bit thin, but I haven't had any trouble so far. So they do have an aftermarket, um, kind of like a comfort seat. I think I might be getting it in the future. If I do, I will make a video on it on the channel. Tank capacity is 3.7 US gallons or 14 liters. The fuel consumption is a claimed 56 miles per gallon US. Yeah, my my last trip um, estimated 46.5 miles per gallon. So I think 56 might be a little bit generous. So we'll, we'll have to see long term what this does as far as fuel mileage. Of course, that's going to greatly depend on how you use the bike. Um, if you get on that throttle a lot, um, you're not gonna be as fuel efficient. So um, I guess if I stayed in power mode C, I would probably be doing better. The weight of this bike is 445 pounds or 202 kilograms. And I honestly think that the extra weight of this bike over my previous one makes it feel more planted on open roads like what I'm riding on today. So it's, it's a really good experience. This is Suzuki's new 270 degree crank 776 parallel twin. And this is the same motor that's in the V-Strom 800 DE. Uh, max power is 82 horsepower at 8,500 RPM. Max torque 57.5 foot pounds at 6,800 RPM. Exhaust is a stainless steel two into one underslung single sided exhaust. I think it looks great in my opinion. Might as well do a quick sound demo here. I think it sounds awesome. It's just not loud enough. It could be a lot louder. Good sound character to it though, huh? Has a bi-directional quick shifter as standard. It has to be the best quick shifter I've ever used. Transmission has a nice prominent click when shifting gears. I have to say the gearing on this bike is excellent. It's so nice to be able to get through an intersection and stay in first gear. My previous bikes, uh, the Tiger Sport, the KTM 390, I'd have to, I'd probably make it up to about eight or 10 miles an hour and be compelled to shift in a second just because I'd be revving it out so high. But this one, I can probably get up to about 30 miles an hour before shifting to the second. So it's been awesome. Since I'm talking about the gearing and the clutch, the clutch lever is not adjustable and it is 
kind of a little bit of a heavy clutch pull, heavier than I'm used to. Again, this is subjective. Um, and I know it's not just my bike because they had a Suzuki 800 DE over there, which similar setup, you know, same engine. Um, the, the clutch lever looked the same and it had the same kind of, um, you know, heavier uh, lever pull on it. So I just think that's the design of the bike. Again, it's not a complaint, just an observation. And also um, the clutch lever is not adjustable. Would have liked to have seen that on there. The brake lever is adjustable though. The front brakes have uh, radial Nissan 4 piston calipers and twin 310 millimeter discs. ABS is standard. The brake feel is very good, very progressive. The brake pedal itself is nice and wide compared to my previous bike, so it's really easy to find your footing. I've had, I've had bikes where this pedal was so small it was hard to find when you're riding, or it was slippery when it was wet and your foot would fall off of it. So um, I like the brake pedal on this bike. Rear brakes, we have a Nissan single piston caliper on a single 240 millimeter disc. Let's talk about the tires. Uh, we have Dunlop Road Sport 2 tires. I've never had a bike with these on here before. Um, my favorites are that I've had are the Michelin Road 5s. So I'm going to give these a shot. Yeah, any, anybody else have experience with Road Sport 2s? Are these good long-term tires? They feel good for now. Of course, I, I need to break these in more. I, I've barely leaned on this bike at all so far, but looking forward to kind of getting used to it, putting it through its paces. Hopefully I'll lean it a little bit today. But yeah, let me know what you think of the uh, Road Sport 2s. So we have KYB upside down suspension in the front. I believe these are 41 millimeters with 5.1 inches of travel or 130 millimeters. In the rear, we have a KYB monoshock. I know it's probably kind of hard to see it. Also with 5.1 inches of travel, and uh, it is preload adjustable, whereas the front suspension is non-adjustable. Now the preload has seven levels of adjustment. The stock setting is number three, and I have left it on number three. It feels good. All right, pictures acquired. Got to be a little careful on these roads today. Uh, we had some really bad weather a few days ago, so the roads are a little bit sandy out here. So the suspension on this bike, as you might expect, is a little bit on the sporty side. It's a pretty stiff suspension, but it is fairly compliant when it needs to be. So it still feels good. If you go over a really bumpy road, um, it could be a little more jarring than something with long travel suspension, but as to be expected, uh, no complaints about that. The mirrors, um, I really love these mirrors on this bike. They're in a good position, and I don't get a lot of vibration out of them. And speaking of vibration, um, this bike, the motor on here can be a little vibey at times. I've noticed that whatever gear I'm in, doesn't matter, when I get up to around between 5,000 and 5,500 RPMs, um, it gets a little vibey through, mainly through the seat and the foot pegs. The handlebar, not so much, although, I mean, I can still feel it a little bit, but it's not as bad as like the foot peg area. Again, not really complaining, just an observation. Um, just make sure you go into a higher or lower RPM to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Because if you go over it, um, like 6,500, 7,000 RPM, it smooths out again. Just trying to judge what gear to be in for these corners since I've never taken this bike out here before, but I think I could probably use second gear through this area. The engine braking on this bike is pretty intense. I, I like that though. I like a bike with, with strong engine braking. Like that corner right there, I didn't even have to hit the brakes at all. And I know my lines suck. I'm, I'm probably what you would call a um, intermediate rider at best. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, see, I got around 5,000 RPMs and it got really vibey. This reel is really good. Now that was a nice sounding exhaust. I think that was a KTM. taking it easy today because this is my first time out here with this bike. But I am getting a good feeling for it. The quick shifter seems to work really well in low RPMs. Feels pretty smooth in the high RPMs, but surprisingly good at low RPMs as well. That's dangerous. Yeah, the brakes on this bike, I have to say, they're very good. I know I talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, even the back brakes, very good. Like right now, back brake only. Really responsive. From my experience with my previous bikes, it always seems like if the front brake's really good, the back one is just awful but uh, this one's balanced very nicely. I hope anybody else that gets this bike out there that may be watching this video, I hope yours feel just as good as mine because this is awesome. And I don't wanna give you a bad review about something. I mean, all I can tell you is the way mine feels to me. So I hope you guys do just as well. Beautiful day for a ride out here today. Not too much traffic. Last couple of times I've come out here, I've just got stuck behind slow moving cars and it just uh, takes away from the ride experience a little bit. Hopefully you can understand why this is my favorite route. And it's not really that far from where I live either. It's probably a 20, 30 minute drive to the beginning of the nice riding. Just have to make sure you keep your eyes on the road instead of looking at the scenery. <laughs>
I consider myself super fortunate that I'm able to ride a brand new bike like this. Now this is my only bike. I did have to trade my last bike in to get this one and kind of want to talk about that a little bit. I mentioned it um, in my last video where I did my last ride on my KTM 390 Adventure, but some things have changed, um, you know, health-wise. I, I did have some lower back issues, had to have surgery and was down and out, uh, couldn't ride for a couple months. Now I'm back out on the bike, um, feeling pretty good, but I don't ever want to risk messing my back up that bad again. Um, and it wasn't because of an accident or anything like that. It was just uh, just damage done over years and uh, maybe making poor decisions on lifting heavy things and whatnot. But anyway, um, I realized that going and attempting to do off-road riding and that kind of stuff, probably not the best idea. So I traded the KTM 390 Adventure because I don't think it would be a good idea for me to pursue off-road riding in my condition. I figured it would be better for me to get a comfortable street bike, something that was a lot of fun to ride. And I think this bike was a great decision. I should have mentioned earlier, but this bike does not have cruise control, and I don't consider that a negative. It's just the style of the bike. Uh, I don't see cruise control on a lot of these uh, types of naked sport bikes, um, unless it's like a special edition, but it's just not very common. It's a nice to have, like in that price point, but it's not a necessity, just like the adjustable suspension. Would I love to have it? Yes. Um, did it deter me from getting this bike? Um, obviously not. I, I bought it, so <laughs> yeah, sure, it would have been nicer to have, but it feels great. And I bought this bike without having done a test ride on it. Um, that wasn't an option at the dealership where I bought this from, so I kind of just had to take my chances. Just based on how it felt, you know, sitting on it at the dealership, um, I knew the riding position should be comfortable um of course you know i didn't know until i rode home and and then realized that yeah it's it's fine it's uh it's comfortable doesn't it isn't causing me any back pain or anything like that and i'm probably going in an hour right now since i left the house and it feels great i was doing research long before i, I actually decided to buy this bike um basically right after they announced this bike um, I think it was last year So I had a very long time to consider what my replacement bike would be for the KTM and ended up with a very short list of contenders. Uh, first on the list was the Livewire S2 Delmar. Yes, I considered getting an electric bike as my primary ride uh, for some of the reasons I mentioned earlier. Um, I have no intention at this point to go off-road and, uh, you know, this is probably the furthest kind of trip that I take is maybe a 50 to 100 mile uh, round trip just to, to get a quick weekend ride in. But most of my stuff is local around town and commuting and um, an electric bike would be perfect for that. But um, probably the, the main reason that I didn't go with that bike was because it's just been delayed so long. It was supposed to be out a while ago, and last I heard, it was supposed to be out in June. Had never heard anything back from them after that again, so I'm um, assuming it was delayed again. So I basically just canceled my reservation and went to bike number two, which is the Suzuki 8S. 
I knew this would be a contender from the moment they announced it. When I saw the specs and everything on this bike, the fact that Suzuki was coming out with a brand new engine on a brand new platform just piqued my interest. And out of all the naked bikes that are available right now, um, in my opinion, this one is the nicest looking and I thought it would suit me the best. And I, I think I made a good decision on that. It just feels so good through the corners here. Once you lean the bike over, it just stays locked in. Just pick a line and commit and it does what you ask of it. So what more could you want? Some rocks over here. Wow. Since I'm on the bike right now, I think I'll go over the switch gear. So there's a toggle on the top here for high beams. That's your flash. Push it forward and you get your solid high beams. Um, here is your selector toggle switch for changing stuff on the dashboard. And your mode button for selecting your different modes traction control and your power mode and of course your turn signals and your horn going over to the right it's very simple uh, there's a combination toggle here that's that's your your off start and run um, and then your hazards down here this toggle is very nice. It's got the Suzuki one touch starting. So just push it down. No need to hold it until it starts up. It just does its own thing. It's kind of cool. Anyway, let's check out the bike. This is my favorite color. So I'm glad I happened across this one. Um, now, if the only other color I could get was the Pro Cosmic Blue, I would have taken that as a second choice, but I prefer the white with the blue accents. Now, of course, looks are subjective as always, but I think this is a very nice looking bike. Some people don't like the stacked headlights. I think it looks really cool. So Suzuki says this has a steel backbone frame and the engine is a stressed member. So there is no uh, bottom support. It, it basically hangs from the frame here. Now it does have a bolt-on tubular subframe, which is cool. Um, if you ever need to, you could replace the back end on here. So it wouldn't be a total loss. You can actually do some repairs on here. The pegs are not really set back too much, but they are a little bit raised up. So when you're sitting there, um, you do have quite a good bend in your knee, but uh, your feet aren't too far back. The bike does have LED lights all around, including the turn signals. 
which apparently is not the case in all markets. More on the lighting, there are position lights on either side here. Here's a look at the tail section. Now, before I picked this bike up, I was definite that I was going to put a tail tidy on here, but the more I ride this, uh, the more I'm kind of getting used to it. Like the quality of the lights themselves are really nice. I still think it looks a little bit weird though, but if somebody larger like myself, I'm about 220 pounds, six feet tall, it makes the bike look longer. So when a bigger guy like me is on it, I don't look so funny. The dashboard is very nice in my opinion. The actual physical dimensions of the screen are a lot larger than the actual viewable area itself. It's got a five inch full color TFT. So the screen is very simple but you have all the necessary information. You have your tack on the left-hand side that takes up a lot of the screen, actually. Um, your traction control setting, your Suzuki drive mode selection. Um, you've got your speedometer, your gear indicator um, in the middle there. QS is for quick shifter enabled. Uh, you've got your fuel, your trip counters, and your engine temperature. Coolant temperature is 187 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you have your clock in the upper right-hand side. Um, you've got your warning lights on either side. Uh, pretty standard stuff. It's a very nice screen. Uh, this does not have Bluetooth connectivity or anything like that, but it, it functions very well. So being a naked bike, I have no wind protection at all, but I'm gonna tell you something, and I've mentioned it on a previous video. Um, when I had the Tiger Sport 660, I had this little uh, sport windscreen on the front. And that was probably my favorite windscreen on that bike the whole time I had it. I tried probably five or six of them, if I had to guess. But that was my favorite, so even over the stock screen. And the stock one was great for keeping wind off of you at lower speeds and stuff. And I'm sure if I would have taken you know, like a highway trip on it or something, I would have appreciated it more. But when riding out in Arizona in the summertime, you want a little bit of airflow or a lot of airflow. And uh, it just makes it a lot more comfortable to ride. And although it's, it's not super hot today, um, I am getting hot like sitting still. And if I ride slow, I get a little bit hot, even though the engine on here it, it gets warm, but it's not what I would call hot or uncomfortable. And I feel like if I had a windscreen on here, um, I wouldn't be as comfortable because I wouldn't have as much airflow. I kind of prefer the naked bike with no screen at all. I mean, the air hitting me is very smooth. I'm not getting any buffeting or anything. So my final verdict for today on the Suzuki 8S, the shakedown run, was a success. Now I had high expectations for this bike and it surpassed all of them. Every other bike that I've had after the first couple rides I started to notice things and a lot of the times they weren't big things that I noticed. Just something little here or there like the Tiger Sport running a little bit hot or the KTM being, being very vibey and shaking stuff loose and some of the bolts that were on there were kind of like cheap metal and they didn't feel super high quality, um, just like the switch gear. But, you know, it's stuff that you deal with, especially for a price point bike. And depending on what you're gonna use the bike for, um, that may be exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, the Suzuki 8S, um, it's not gonna be a master of all things. Um, but if this is the type of riding that you're looking for, man, I, I would find it really hard to beat this bike, at least for the style of riding that, that I like to do. All right, I've got 100 miles on the bike. I think I can take it on the freeway. I'm really curious how this does. Not bad. I wouldn't want to do long distances like this, but yeah, it's pretty cool.
again, I'm at 5,500 RPM and I'm getting some really good buzzing on the foot pegs right now. A little bit in the fingertips through the handlebars, but not much. I do notice that every little movement I make kind of unsettles the bike pretty drastically. Yeah, it's not incredibly windy today either, but yeah, every little movement on the bars just starts to give me a little bit of a wobble, a little shimmy in the front. Just something to be aware of. Honestly, it's not really a problem for me because I rarely do highway rides anyway. I'm just, whoa. Yeah, that wasn't cool. As I was saying, there are reasons why I don't like to ride on the freeway on a motorcycle. <laughs> that was one of them. Obviously, it's not gonna be as smooth as a touring bike with a touring windscreen taking all the wind off of you, giving you a nice calm bubble to ride in, but that's not what this bike's all about. Still getting some vibrations at 6,000 RPM. It's kind of intense on my feet, actually. It's got some decent roll-on power, I'll tell you that. Six gear doing 6,000 RPM. If I pull that throttle, it, it goes pretty quickly. Now, I've noticed this bike does better at the low to mid range. It kind of falls off at the high end. Overall, pretty happy with the highway experience, I have to say. So, I've been on this bike for a couple hours now and sitting on this seat, it's getting a little tiresome. So. <laughs> I am getting a little bit numb. It's a good, comfortable seat, uh, just not for long rides. So I may be looking into that aftermarket Suzuki comfort seat or some third-party alternative. Probably try the Suzuki first. Yeah, overall, I'm very happy with my purchase. I I'm so glad that I made the swap. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that I won't get the opportunity to do some off-road riding and see some of the sites out there, places where you can't get to by car or by regular motorcycle, but maybe I'll get out there somehow, someday. But until then, I'll be happy riding on the Suzuki 8S, staying to the streets, and just enjoying the ride. Thanks for coming along with me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please click that like button. And if you haven't subscribed and you're interested in this bike, then maybe consider subscribing because I plan to have some more future content going to different places, installing different things, and we'll see where it goes from there. But thanks for coming along with me today. I will catch you guys on the next video. See ya.